Six months after its inauguration, the Senate Committee Review Committee has held its inaugural meeting, pledging that the draft of the revised 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria will be ready before the end of the first quarter of 2021. This is coming just as the House of Representatives also assured Nigerians that it will soon constitute its uh, Constitution Review Committee. Joining us to discuss this is Nekabari Anna, a legal practitioner, and Mukta Mohammed, a political analyst. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Good evening. I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Anna. Why do you think this review has taken so long? Uh, what do you think has, or feel rather, has held Nigeria back from carrying out the review since 1999? Several factors have militated against Nigeria successfully reviewing the constitution. And one of it is that we are playing politics with the review. We are not putting round pegs in round holes or square pegs in square holes. So what we are doing rather is recruiting people who are political errand boys. For example, for example, talking about the composition of these committees, what manner of people are in the committee? Is it people who are knowledgeable enough in this field? Or we are just looking at these things based on the geopolitical zones, two senators representing each geopolitical zone, one senator from each of the, each of the states? Yes, as much as we want spread, as much as we want outreach, it is important that we identify people who can do the job. Let us note, that in 2014, the government of President Goodluck Jonathan appointed 492 CONFAB delegates who sat for about 151 days. After 151 days, these 492 delegates came up with 600 resolutions. None has ever been implemented. Why? Because eventually, the government who replaced President Goodluck Jonathan felt that, oh, these resolutions do not meet our aspirations. This time, the Senate has appointed 56 men into this constitution drafting review committee. The House of Reps will similarly do the same. So you can see that on and on, the business of constitution review has always been political. It has never been about the people. As of July 27, 2017, the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria made 32 amendments to the constitution of 1999. Out of the 32 amendments, how many of them were about the people? Very few. Most of it was all about money sharing between the arms of government. The change of the name of the Nigerian police from the Nigerian police force to Nigerian police. So all of these things, we have been having problems of constitution review because it has never been about the people. It has ever always been about the political class and their interests. Okay, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, I, I know you still have a bit more to say, but I'm sure that, you know, there are certain aspects of this um, uh, review that Nigerians have been yearning for for a long time. Like you said, in, you know, some time ago, there was a review that adjusted some things that were not um, um, people related or citizen related. Um, um, I'm, I'm then going to sp quickly speak to uh, Mr. Mok Mukhtar Mohammed, I want to know your thoughts on the major aspects um, of this review that the committee will be looking at uh, this time. For me, I, I, I think there are plenty in the gallery. I think, um, like here, the, 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 um, like Mr. Aina said, uh, I think it's not has been about the people, it has been about their political interests and where they lie, the political interests and their political future. And that's why they come up with some of this review. I don't think it's all about Nigerian people as, a, as, a, as entirely. Now, by and by, I don't think the, by, I don't have a problem. I just believe that the constitution of Nigeria is not the problem of Nigeria. The real problem of Nigeria is the implementation of whatever we have in the constitution. Even if you do a good constitution now, you are not ready to implement it. The, for you to implement a constitution, you need to think about the rule of law. As it stands now, Nigeria is back for when it comes to the rule of law. Nobody, both the federal, both the legislative arm, both the executive arm of government, they flaunt judicial uh, judgments the way they want to. So it's not about the people, it's about the people. And for me, what we need is an economic restructuring of our nation. 
not even the political restructure, because political restructure have not get, get, gotten us anywhere. We should really begin to look at economic restructure, where we are thinking of restructuring our economy, looking at what the North Central can produce, looking at what the West can produce, look at what the South can where they bring it on the table. Then we have true federalism, not fidibotic federalism that we have once one side of the nation is the one producing and, and the other side is just the one collecting based on population and demography. So for me, the constitution goes beyond uh, the, 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 what is written on, on the document, even if the document made the constitution. But I think the constitution should be the people, what it will benefit the people, what will the people derive from the constitution, what pride do we have to talk about the Nigerian constitution? Nobody is, is so proud of the Nigerian constitution because it's not, even, it's not a workable document. And again, like I said, it does not even have the respect for the citizen or even for the, for the rule of law. You go to the court, you see people from the constitution, from the rule. And so where, 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 why should I be excited that it's going to be a constitution review when I know that the executive arm, whoever comes in as executive, I'm not talking about only this government, any other government will come in here and want to do what they want to do. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go, you know, deeper, you know, and talk now, you know, some of the things that you mentioned, um, uh, political, you know, um, review on economic review and some of all of that. There's also other aspects of this review that a lot of people are hungry for, devolution of powers, reviewing the federal structure that we currently are using. Um, I'm going to get into that, and I want to know if you would be disappointed if there is a constitution review and some of these things are still ignored. But before we get there, I want to go back to Mr. Nekabari. Um, and you, of course, you might also want to answer this question. Um, or you can start with this, actually. But I want to know if you feel that the, the way the Constitution was made in 1999 was um, intentional. Um, do you feel that these uh, certain things were left out, you know, to suit certain interests? Um, and that's what has kept us the way that we are today. Or, or has it just been a lack of political will to put things to, to in motion? Absolutely, certain things were left out, and it was deliberate. Some political scientists will call the 1999 constitution a unitary constitution or a military constitution. The Kaki boys, as you know, are interested in the unitary system of government, a centralized system of government, centralized way of doing things. And that is why you see that it tilts towards the unitary system than the federal system that it claims to represent. Yes, indeed, it represents lots of interest, interest of the powerful people. The constitution is called the federal constitution, but is it truly really federal? The answer is no. And that's why some of us are, are hoping that if they decide to do the right thing this time, it's fundamental that they look at certain things like resource control. Resource control, not for the Niger Delta, but total resource control for the 36 states of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Every state in Nigeria has what it takes to feed itself. Every state, every region in Nigeria is endowed with different natural and human resources that is capable of driving the economy of that state. But we have continued to limit ourselves to oil. We have continued to limit ourselves because we feel that the majority should continue to oppress the people of the Niger Delta region. And that when the oil is finished, then we can go back to the bitumen in Kogi state, we can go back to the gold in Kogi, we can go back to the mineral resources in, in different other states of the country. Again, the constitution of the 1999 constitution does not guarantee local government autonomy. Why does it not guarantee it? And despite the move by different senates over the years, why have we been unable to achieve local government financial and political autonomy? We always talk about financial autonomy and little about the political autonomy. Why have we been unable to achieve it? Because the governors of the 36 states would want local government chairmen that they can remove based on how they like it. Because the governor of the 36 states and sometimes their wives want to play along, play around with local government funds. All of these things are things we cannot continue to tolerate in the system. All right, I, I'm going to, I'm, uh, I'm going to ask. Yeah, I, I want to quickly ask, you know, because there's, there's so much, you know, that I, I believe that every person would want to be involved and to be imputed in this constitution review. But what I'm going to ask is, would you be disappointed if um, 
these things aren't changed or fixed. No, I will not be disappointed. Because now we, we have another opportunity to do those things, I believe. So would you be disappointed if, you know, once again, those things are ignored? I will not be disappointed because majority of these people who are going to review the law, we are not elected by the people. So they will not do the bidding of the people. They will do the bidding of the Godfathers. So I won't be disappointed. All right. And back to um, uh, Mukta Mohammed, I, I want to get your thoughts on... Um, of course, uh, sustainability of uh, some states. Um, there's so many, so much I, I wish I could ask. Um, but let's get your thoughts on the sustainability of these states. If you were going to, you know, change the structure and make the states, you know, have to fund for the, or, you know, um, source, you know, income for themselves, and um, of course, going to state police and there's so much. Uh, do you think that Nigerian states, you know, are even going to be able to handle these changes? Look, there's no state in Nigeria that does not, that does not have the well within to take care of itself. There's no state. You, you see, Nigeria is so blessed with a lot of mineral resources. We have a lot in a lot of human physical. Let me give an instance of Lagos. What stop Lagos looking at the, all the waterways all around Lagos and making Lagos an aquatic beauty? What stop Lagos being being looking at their competitive advantage, looking at making sure that Lagos is is, is where we got we get. So serious in the fishery, they become uh, the agricultural sector should be fishery. They say look, every state can I mean, Now we're talking about KB state having rice. Can Lagos state not come some of all these things that they have also into um, rice production using the the the, the, the village system, the waterway that they have? All these are things that are obtainable. So there's no state that cannot depend on. There's no state that cannot take care of itself. What we have is that we are too lazy to think inwardly. Because we have what we call the cheap money, oil money. Oil money is cheap. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost the government to think out of the box. But when you talk about inwardly, you think out of the box. Lake State is where internet generated revenue because when the then president, uh, Basanjo, decided to hold the Lagos State local government fund, Lagos had to think inwardly. And that's why they are where they are in internet generated revenue. So every state has the well within to take care of itself. Now, do we want to do that? I don't think, like he said, the political class are ready for that now. The political class wants to continue because when you give for true federalism, when you allow each state become, why, why do we have to have the exclusive right of mineral resources belonging to the federal government? Those are part of the things I want removed. I want states to be able to develop their own resources, states to be able to generate their own power, states to be able to, to have their own local policing. Even if I have my, 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 my reservation in that, I still want it because the federal police that it stands, the governors of this state are not, they are just ceremonial security officers. They have to take orders from, from Abuja. The control of police will not answer to the state governors. Those are part of the things that the government really need to look at the constitutional review. Will I be disappointed? Yes, I'll be very disappointed if nothing is done. Not because nothing is done, but because taxpayer money would have gone into this project and it becomes a white elephant project. I would be very disappointed because that resources should have been channeled towards other sources that can create employment for Nigerians, that can develop our decay infrastructure. Why spend it on a white elephant project on a jamboree when you know nothing will come out from it? It is important also, and of course, uh, still with uh, Mr. Mokhtar Mohammed, is it important to take a closer look also at the members of the committee uh, that will be making this review? Um, should that give us, you know... All, yeah. Who are the members of the committee? Are these learned people? Do they even know what the constitution says? Is it the same members that we see every day and on? Is it the same members that we see in the house? Is it the same members that have no respect for their constitution? Is it the same members that will quarrel over common things? Is it the same member that will tell the, 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 the a minister, minister, minister of the mic? Is that same member that we are expecting anything new from? I don't think they are really serious, like he said. Because I, I heard the Senate President Omar, uh, Deputy Senate President Omar Gege saying that this will be ready sometime in March. And this 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 topic came up because a, a, a one of the online newspapers carried it today, saying that for how many months now there have not been any talk about the review of the constitution. That is when they woke up to the reality of it and begin to talk about it. So it shows you that it's not in their interest to review the constitution. He talked about the local government autonomy. Even the local government themselves doesn't want autonomy because they know when autonomy for the local government comes in, the current local government chairman will not be there because the people will elect their own. But presently now the governors determine who will be the local government chairman. 
Have you seen any election in Nigeria that the state in INEC uh, Independent Electoral Committee, those that you see a sitting governor that is a, a APC House, a local government chairman that is PDP, it doesn't happen. All the local government chairman will be APC. So you, there's a lot to be, to be done, but do we have the political will? I don't think so. We All want right. to continue to do things the way we used to do it because Where? somebody has to benefit from it. Somebody has to continue to be the godfather. Somebody has to be the chief executive officer of a state, even if they are not in power. All right, hold on. We're, we're, we're out of time. Um, Nekabari, uh, Anna, I want to wrap up with you. I want you to share in the shortest possible time, um, will this be kudos to the current administration, the President Mahmoud Abouri administration, if these things happen and there's some level of implementation? Um, do you, well, you've already stated your thoughts on um, expecting it to, to go yes, through. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. It is, yes, indeed. It's going to be kudos to right. President Muhammad Buhari's administration if they are able to insert certain clauses into this proposed review. Things like the independence of the judiciary. Yeah. For, I'm, I'm a lawyer, so I'm particularly interested about this. You see, there is a time limit during which election petition cases that concern the politicians are handled. But there is no time limit within which a judge must dis dispose of criminal and civil cases in court of law. And that is why you see foreign investors are not coming into Nigeria okay. because cases last in Nigerian courts by eternity. All so right. how will the economy increase? The economy will never improve because businessmen do not trust to put their money in a system where the courts do not work. So okay. we want to see a situation like it's done in Uganda where a judge must hear and deliver judgment on the matter within 90 days after the matter is, is called upon before, before it's called. Thank it's you. also important for us to look at chapter 2 of the Constitution because that's what concerns the ordinary man. Chapter 2 of the Constitution that they say is not justiciable must become enforceable. The right to education, the right to health care, the right to good we're, goods, we're out the of right time, to sir. Good drinking water. Those are the things we want to see and it's going to be a plus to Muhammad Buhari. We're out of time. Um, Nekabari Anna and, of course, uh, Mukta Mohamed, thank you so much for um, sharing your thoughts with us. Looking forward to speaking with you again. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for staying with us. We've taken a short break now. When we return, I'll be giving my take. February 19, 2017, the British Parliament will debate on Monday whether the government should rescind its invitation to President Donald Trump or a foreign official state visit. A petition to the Parliament calling for the invite to be withdrawn has amassed more than 1.8 million signatures and as of Sunday, uh, far surpassing the 100,000 signatures needed to prompt a debate in Parliament. In court, he should not be invited to make an official state visit because it would cause embarrassment to Her Majesty the Queen. That was in 2017. And now, in 2018, the 22nd of February, a fresh controversy hit Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's troubled visit to India on Thursday as reports emerged that a convicted Khalistani terrorist had been invited to an official dinner reception in New Delhi and photographed with the leader's wife. Already stung by a perceived snob to Trudeau because of his government's soft stance on pro-Khalistan elements, Canadian authorities said the invitation extended to the Indo-Canadian businessman Jaspal Atwal had been rescinded. And these are excerpts from two different news reports, two different events in the past where invitation was either withdrawn or at least uh, reconsidered. It's obviously not new to hear of such events. The question most times that creates the controversy is why these invitations were withdrawn uh, most times out of public outcry and petitions signed by hundreds, thousands or sometimes millions. It is an organization, a nation or a body bowing to pressure of the voices of many, mostly in a democracy. It is in a democracy also, it is expected that citizens have the right to speak sometimes in an uh, unconventional way to express their hidden pain. It also gives such a body the chance to show the people what stand it takes on certain issues. What this latest incident between the NBA and Governor El Rufai shows is that there are surely questions that should never be swept under the rug in our polity. It is also encouraging for the Nigerian people to never stay silent and that itself, or rather that itself, is a victory. Big for some, small for others, but still a victory in our developing democracy. 
And that's all for today. Plus, uh, Politics returns tomorrow at 7 p.m. with more, even more interesting conversations. Remember to stay safe and have a great evening.